First question is from Jaina Roller Fit. Can you actually reset your body's set point? I used to be 310 pounds. I got down to 155 pounds, but never can stay there long. My body keeps rebounding and staying at 195. I've been lifting for five years and tracking macros to lose weight. I would like to my body to sit at 145 to 160 pounds. How can I reset my set point? You know, I never, I, uh, 10 years in personal training, I don't think I even heard someone talk about set point. Mm -hmm. That was not like a common, is it like getting marketed like crazy? That's what it in is. The last, it has to be. Because I, I feel like we've we've addressed this multiple times in the show. That and net carbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, that that is two. that is definitely one that's yeah. new for sure. No, I feel for her. So I feel for this person because uh, or her. I think it's a her, but uh, for them because this is uh, this can definitely be challenging. But here's the deal: set point, the body set point, uh, definitely has been used by marketers to make you to sell you products. What they'll say is, you it's your set point, your body's natural physiology is making you this overweight, try our product or our process to change your set point as if you would have this new normal and now no matter what you do, you can't gain weight because you have this new set point. Okay, so here's the truth. The 99%, there's definitely some physiological stuff that happens, and we'll get to that in a second, but 99% of a set point is behavior, okay? Mm -hmm. When you have behaviors that have caused you to weigh 310 pounds at some point, which did not happen overnight, right? It takes a long time. It's a slow process of weight gain, oftentimes starting it as a child, right? Oftentimes, someone who's 310 pounds as an adult probably dealt with weight issues uh, as a child. These are hard set psychological behaviors and attachments to food or food relationship issues. And that's very hard to change. Just because you lose weight doesn't mean you change those hard set behaviors and coping mechanisms. Yeah, many times you've just mm -hmm. been really disciplined for an extended period of time. You you've just, you've you done did. it just through sheer will. Exactly. Yeah. Sheer discipline. I mean, you see this at the, the highest level in competing. I mean, uh, you'd be surprised how many of these kids that are getting up on stage and competing – have all kinds of eating issues, just like these 310 pound people, but just different, you know, but they've been able to get on stage, present their physiques because through sheer will, will they can discipline themselves for a year straight of eating like regimen. Hey, this is a look at, I'll tell you what, statistically speaking, there's a significant percentage of people who get gastric bypass surgery, who gain mm -hmm. the weight back. Mm -hmm. Now consider gastric bypass is about as extreme as it gets in terms of setting up blocks, preventing you from gaining weight. They literally bypass your stomach so that you don't have one, essentially, making it almost impossible to overeat, and yet a significant portion of people force themselves to gain weight. I actually worked with someone like this. I couldn't yeah. believe that this actually happened. So the set point is a behavior one. So here's my advice to, to this person asking this question. If you want to change your set point, Work with a therapist. Work with someone who's going to work with your behaviors. That's where the issue lies. It's not some issue with your body that it wants to be at a particular weight. Because if I, if, if we locked you in a laboratory mm -hmm. and fed you the same amount and kept you certain period of active or whatever, your body would weigh whatever we'd want it uh, mm -hmm. to weigh. So, well, also I think it's important to acknowledge like where homeostasis <laughs> is, like where le that maintenance is, where your body's most comfortable based off of like behaviors, based off the way you're, uh, you know, training, you're eating, all these things, uh, to then uh, stretch yourself and and push yourself uh, to sort of uh, get at, into a different category, into a different level. Uh, you you know, like like you mentioned, a lot of it's behavioral driven. Uh, this isn't like a genetic limitation, uh, which is kind of like what this implies. There's something metabolically going on here, though, too, that we have to address that's very common, right? Somebody who's 310 pounds drops all the way down to the 150 range. The amount of calorie reduction and movement and cardio and training this pro this person probably did to get to that point was a lot, I bet. Probably. And a lot of times it wasn't, it was done in, with the intentions of how fast can I get this off my body versus what is the smartest fa the smartest way for me to right, get this Right, because we don't know what she did. Or right, exactly. Did, right? Yeah. And many times what happens is the person who was this heavy got all the way down to 155 by doing things like eating 900 to 1,200 calories a day, doing cardio, weight training, staying super active to get that point. And then what ends up happening when they reach that 155, let's say that was their target, they go, whew, 
okay, I'm going to relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they're like, en enough of those crazy three-hour hikes, or I'm not going to be taking that high-intensity cardio class all the time, yeah. or I'm going to every once in a while enjoy myself because I'm down this way. And then what happens is the weight comes back on so rapidly because their body had adapted to eating so low of calories mm -hmm. and moving so much that it's just not realistic to maintain that the rest of their life. And so when they just try and be somewhat normal, and that doesn't mean like they don't, I, and I'm not saying this person goes from, discipline and eating hardly anything and exercising like crazy to all of a sudden like, oh, fuck it. And that's what gains them back. No, you don't have to. Literally, when you've slowed your metabolism down to 900 to 1200 calories a day with intensive training all the time, it doesn't take much for yeah. that weight to start piling on. Make a couple bad choices well, yeah, a week and, when, it, and it comes on rapidly. Yeah. You see this when, when it's really fast, you know, it's it, like everything is all cylinders and going a hundred percent. And this is what we caution a lot with our clients coming that want to lose a lot of weight is to really consider that, uh, you know, you're going to be, uh, dramatically dropping calories. It's not sustainable. So to, to, to kind of like slowly edge your way down and build muscle at the same time is a better approach. Yeah. Now I will say this, I'd like to add this as well, um, to this person is also be kind to yourself. Uh, your body's sitting at 195. That's still a big, that's all, that's over a hundred pounds lower than where it used to sit before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've gone a long way and you're still kicking ass. And so be okay with that. Be, you know, accept the fact that you've gone a long distance, be, you know, have some gratitude or, or I should say, be proud of that. And it's a slow process. It takes a long time, longer than people realize the, the weight, keeping the weight off for for forever part takes a lot longer than getting it off well it takes you also got to reframe your goal like so a lot of times when the goal is when you're at 310 and you you just want to get the fat off you yeah, just want to yeah. get you want to lose once you weight, make that decision lose, right? overall yeah, you just want to lose weight right you want to get down you want to get down but you you really should be focused on building muscle right. which means actually increasing calories and protein and strength training reduction probably of all the high intensity and cardio and i'm making a lot of assumptions right now but yeah. this is speaking from experience normally the client that you get like in this situation mm -hmm. they cut calories like crazy and they picked up activities they, do, they just do tons of cardio tons significantly mm -hmm. to get to that point and then they, they're in this and this is why we see biggest loser people always pile the weight back on yeah. and the only ones that you see keep it off for an extended period of time hire a personal trainer to like hammer them every day mm -hmm. you, you there is a small percentage of biggest losers if you guys don't know that actually maintain it's like 15 percent it's like yeah 10%. super it's super low and out of those almost all of them have, like in enroll in something or have a yeah. trainer or coach that they hire to just keep pushing them and keep burning the and keep burning. The most success I ever had with clients like this were when they worked with me. So I was the trainer and then they also had a therapist yeah. uh, and they worked with the therapist. Mm -hmm. It was always the most successful formula by far. Me by myself, I could do pretty well, especially towards the end of my career because I, I got experience, but it, it just, it wasn't as good. When they had a therapist working on those behavioral issues, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, and then they train with me on top of it two days a week or three days a week, a tremendous success. And there's a couple people that I still keep in contact with who lost well over 100 pounds who've kept it off years and years later, um, and they still are working with the therapist. They still meet with the therapist once a month or once every other week.